Hi! Thanks for stopping by at the Rogue Academy. My name is Jeremy Charles Hone. I'm an ensemble member with the Rogue Artists, and I'm here to share with you a clown workout. Now, you might be asking, um, Mr. Jeremy, what's a clown? What's a clown workout? What's a workout? What's a question? What's in a question? To be or not to be? That is the question. Let's simplify things, shall we? What's a clown? A clown just like a... <laughs> what is a clown? For our purposes today, let's keep it simple. A clown, just like any other art form, is a tool for communication. And that's what we're gonna be working on today. And as for the workout part, just like another workout, you might do cardio to get your heart rate up and sweat. You might lift weights to get strong and build your muscles. For this workout, we're gonna be working on our imagination, opening up our mind. And specifically today, we're gonna to work on two things. We're gonna work on our focus and we're gonna work on our balance. This clown workout. Number one, we'll need a body. Hopefully you have one of those at home. An open mind and a playful spirit. Number two, I want you to grab some sort of circular object. I've got a tennis ball here. You can do it with an apple or really any kind of fruit will work. And uh, we'll want to make sure that you're wearing some clothes that you feel really comfortable in. Not just that you can move around in, but also that make you feel like yourself, make you feel you. Put on your favorite outfit, okay? You know, I really like my other hat better. What is this, a mime workout? Okay, using my imagination. First, think about it, see it, got it. Remember, like I said, when you're using your imagination, you need to be clear and specific. It's important that we warm up our whole body, okay? So first let's start by just shaking out our, our body a little bit. Let's shake out our wrists. Your right wrist, shake it out, shake it out, shake, 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 stop. Shake, 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 stop. Your other wrist, shake out your left wrist. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Ooh, ooh. Shake it out and stop. Give it a shake, give it a shake, give it a shake. Shake, 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 shake. shake. And throw it at the camera. And shake, 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 shake. And throw it at your feet. Shake, 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 shake. shake, shake. And uh, stop. Great. Right. We're already practicing with being fully relaxed. And fully aware. Fully relaxed. Fully aware. Have you ever wondered, do your feet get tired carrying you around all day? This is one way of saying thank you, feet. So if you'll join me down here, we're going to take our feet and this is called the ball of your foot. We're gonna press it into the floor. Just put a little weight on it. You can roll it a little bit side to side. And then we're gonna take the heel and press that into the floor. There's a lot of muscles in our feet and it's important that we take care of them. Then we're gonna take the outside of our foot and press it into the ground. Rolling forward, rolling back, rolling forward, rolling back. And then the inside of our foot, pushing that into the ground, rolling forward, rolling back, rolling forward, rolling back. Now let's put our whole foot flat on the ground. See if you can feel the four corners of your feet all pressing the ground. 
Now, moving forward, moving back, moving forward, and moving back, and then we can go in a circle. So you go to the ball of your feet, the inside rolls back, over to the heel, and along the outside, just like this. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other foot. You can shake out your ankle a little bit if you like. With your other foot, I did my right, so now I'm doing my left. I'm gonna take the ball of my foot and press it into the ground. Focus on your feet right now. We're taking care of our feet. You can move it around. Take the heel of your foot and press it into the ground. Go side to side. Take the outside of your foot, press it forward, pressing back. And the inside of our foot, forward and back, until we finally go flat. Now we really want to feel our feet are strong here, that we've got all four corners of our foot touching the ground. Our pinky toe, our big toe, and both our inside and outside of our heel. And you can go forward and back, and just don't mind the fact that my stripy tights have a little tear in them. Forward and back, and then finally we'll go around in a circle. You can do this one way, and then go the other way. And if this feels really good, if your feet are uh, enjoying this little massage, then you can do it a little bit more. Now, we're gonna warm up our ankles, and then we're gonna press our ankles forward and see if you can come up onto your tiptoes. Can you feel really strong up there on your tiptoes? With your legs straight, feeling your weight going into the ball of your feet, and then slowly bring your ankle backwards. Go ahead and try that a few times. warmed up, I want to move into the balance portion of our workout. Number one thing to remember about balance is the way that we stay balanced, our feet keep us from falling over, is by the power of opposites. When my hips go one way, my shoulders go the other way. Because if my shoulders went the same way, I would just fall over. We want to get our body in line. We're gonna do that by taking our head and putting it above our heart, and our heart and putting it above our hips. Our head, heart, and hips are the three important centers of the body. So check to make sure that they're in line. Am I in line? I think so. Maybe I can put my hips back a little bit. Great. Now that I'm in line, I like to play with going forward and going backward. We're already starting to play with our balance, going forward, going backward. Go ahead and join me. You're in a straight line. Put your weight on top of your heels. You can bend your knees a little bit. That might help. And go forward and move your weight on the balls of your feet. And then go backward, back onto the heels. Next, we're going to jump up to our hips. So for our hips, our hips can rotate and move in all sorts of different directions. Let's start by tipping them to the left. And now bring them back to the middle and tip them to the right, and back to the middle, and tip them to the left, back to the middle, and tip them to the right, and back to the middle. Now we're gonna go forward and back. Tip your hips forward, and notice that when my hips go forward, my shoulders go back. That's so that I maintain balance. And bring your hips back to the middle, and then tip them back, and my, hip, my shoulders go forward. Now, I'll show you this way. Now, instead of just tipping our hips forward and back, let's actually move our whole hips forward. So you can see I'm using my shoulders to keep me balanced. Bring them back to middle. Now my heart is over my hips again. And then my hips go back, my shoulders naturally go forward to keep me from falling over. But here's a question. What would happen if my shoulders didn't go the other way? Let's find out. If my hips go back and my shoulders go back, whoa! Another warm up now that we've shaken out our body and taken care of our feet is let's take care of our shoulders, our head, and our chest. And we're gonna do this by expanding our body as much as we possibly can. I want to see how big you can make your body. Go ahead and expand. Take a big deep breath and expand further. Wow, and then when you exhale, come in toward the center. 
bring everything in close together and tight. Take a deep breath, and now expand again. Now hold your arms out there. We're gonna count to 10. I want you to follow along with me. We're going to relax our hands, then our elbows, our arms, and our shoulders one at a time. And then we're going to jump to the ground and jump back up. You ready? So do it with me. Hold your arms out, hands out, and we're going to do this counting to 10. Go one, two, three, four, five, six. Shoulders go seven, eight. Nine, touch the ground, and ten, jump back up. Try to land soft on your feet. Let's do it again. Oh. Yes! That was really good. This warm up is all about your hips, okay? It's called the clown bounce. Use your shoulders like we were practicing before to keep yourself balanced. Your hips go forward and back and side to side. Forward and back and side to side. Once you get it, forward, back, side to side, you can start to have fun. You can play with your own rhythm. You can go in any directions you want. Maybe you get your arms involved. Maybe they go the opposite way. Maybe they go the same way, but careful not to fall. All these games are designed to encourage you to play and ultimately ask, what is my body capable of? So before we get into our focus exercise for the day, I want to teach you an exercise with your hands. So go ahead and put your hands flat together like this. And we're going to take them through four different positions. This is position number one. Good. Your hands are flat together like this. Number two is we're gonna make a diamond. Chink. Very good. Now all I did to make this diamond is I took my big knuckles and I moved them away from my palms, but I kept my fingertips together. So go ahead and try that. Put your hands flat, your palms and fingers all together. That's position number one. And then go to position number two by pulling your big knuckles out. Really good. For our third position, we're gonna make a claw. You see? Now for this, I've kept my fingertips together, but I've brought my palms together and made this sort of claw shape. So let's try it from the start. We've got our hands flat. Our big knuckles go out to make a diamond. And then our big knuckles come back in and our fingertips stay together to make a claw. Step number four is just to open up our fingers, just like that, and then close your hand to come back to number one. So let's try that all together. We have our hands together, diamond, claw, open your fingers, and close. Let's see, how fast can you do it? Diamond, claw, open your fingers, and close. If it takes you a couple tries to get this claw or the diamond right, that's okay. Eventually, we want to be able to go to any single one whenever we want. Let's do it from the top. Flat, diamond, claw, open, close. 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 But I want you to look at your hands as you're doing this. It's really important to cultivate focus on what you're doing. So, diamond, claw, open, and close. Diamond, claw, open, and close. You can challenge yourself to go a little faster. Diamond, claw, open, close. Diamond, claw, open, close. And then eventually you'll find you kind of get this rolling motion like this. If you've ever seen a, a break dancer, I'm not super good at this, but it's the same notion. You can go diamond, claw, open, close. If I go the other way, open, claw, diamond. Now it's your turn to do a little break dance. Let the energy go from your hand through your shoulder and then wherever feels good. Maybe it hangs around in your hip. 
Maybe it goes around to your chest. Maybe it comes around to your head. You can go around in a circle and down and do whatever feels good. tennis ball. I want you to just hold it in your hand for a second and feel what it's like to hold the tennis ball. Because what we're going to learn next is how to use an imaginary ball. So now if I take the ball out of my hand, I want to think about what I'm about to pick up, see it in front of me, and then be very clear where I grab it. Now see, I'm making this sort of cupped shape where a ball would fit. All you have to do is have your other hand flat, and it's important, the most important thing is that you watch it with your eyes. So I'm gonna just throw it up, and catch it. And see how this is similar to the diamond shape that we were practicing before. It's a little more curved because it's a ball. So we're gonna throw it up and catch it. Throw it up and catch it. Throw it up and catch it. All I'm doing to make it look like I'm throwing a ball to my other hand is moving my hand from flat to bent or diamond. Flat to diamond, that's all. And it's important that your other hand is flat so I can throw it and go, Ooh, Got it. Catch. You can play this at home like this. Side to side is maybe the easiest to see. And mom and dad really like this game because no matter how hard you throw the ball, it doesn't break anything. Caught it. I can throw it to my other hand. Catch. And it's really important that we see it through your eyes. The more clear your imagination is in your mind, the easier it is for us to understand what you're communicating. Awesome, really good job. I hope that you're feeling better now after moving your body and working out your imagination muscle. I highly encourage you to keep playing these games and make up games of your own. Use your imagination. I'm Jeremy from The Rogue Artist, and until next time, keep scheming and keep dreaming.